No. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. So tonight I just got off of some cozy winter reading sprints over on Keisha's channel and it was so much fun. It was my second reading sprints ever and it was my first time officially meeting Keisha, Liv, Elizabeth, Yvette, and Hope. It was a lot of fun. Most of us, I think everybody but Yvette, we're reading the same book. That's the book this reading vlog is all about. How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. This is my fourth Grady Hendrix book. I have an interesting relationship with Grady Hendrix because I'm not entirely convinced that I like his writing. I've read Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I've read Horror Store, and I've read My Best Friend's Exorcism. Probably my favorite right now I rated that four stars, I think. Second favorite would be the vampire one, which I believe was three stars. And Horror Store, I don't really remember. It was like two and a half or three stars. But Haunted House is a buzzword of mine, and I've heard a lot of great things about this one, but people typically do have really high opinions of Grady Hendrix books, even the ones that I didn't really care for. But I wanted to give it a try and I went to my library on Wednesday morning. It just came out Tuesday. I love getting a new release. Sorry, my <laughs> it's late. I'm tired. My voice drops like half an octave when I'm tired. So just don't, don't worry about it. There's nothing better than getting a new release from the library. Cause like, I don't mind getting library books, but when it's brand new and you know you're the first one to read this copy, it's great. I'm 126 pages in, which is probably about 25%, I would say. It kind of just started getting weird. The book starts out, we meet Louise and she, you know, has this interesting relationship with her family. She grew up in, I can't remember which Carolina it is, sorry. But anyway, she went away to college and she ended up settling in San Francisco. She met a guy, had a baby. She's no longer with the guy and her daughter is now five years old. And like, I don't think she had a bad relationship with her parents. It was just, it sounded like it may have been a, a little strained, but her relationship with her brother is not great. Her brother, Mark. Ooh, okay, let me, let me, I need to vent. I don't like Mark and that is, that is a common theme in Grady Hendrix books. I feel like he is really good at creating characters that you hate, that you just cannot stand. So in that regard, he, he, you know, the book's doing really well. So Louise gets a phone call from her brother who still lives in the same town that, that he grew up in that his, that their parents live and their parents got into a car accident and they both passed away. So Louise, she flies to her hometown so she and her brother can get things sorted out, do the, the funeral, and work on getting the house taken care of. Their mom, she was an artist, uh, you could say. Her primary projects were like puppets and dolls. So they're like all over the house, which is super creepy. <laughs> So far, I mean, I'm not, I'm not loving it, but I'm liking it. I'm intrigued. I definitely want to see where this is going. But yeah, the part that I read like 10 pages ago, uh, it's quite strange. Not sure how I feel about it. I don't mind weird. I like weird and I like horror, but that was just really weird. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> I'm halfway through this now. It's messed up, y'all. Ow. Tell me you're in your 30s without telling me you're in your 30s. That's a lot of gray hair. It is Saturday. Um, I didn't read much yesterday. I mean, I did, but it was an audiobook, Tom Felton's memoir, but I didn't like read any of this yesterday. But I read quite a bit today. Grady Hendrix is really good at horror. I've read a few horror books in my day, and it's the the horrific visuals that he's really good at. Like, talk about 
maggots and worms. And in my best friend's exorcism, there was like a tapeworm scene that was like awful. And in Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, there was like a rat scene. And just, you know, he's really good at these horrific scenes. This imagery that is just something else. Um, I'm still really irritated by Mark, but we're learning more about him, seeing more of him as a character, seeing more about his past. So I am starting to like him a little bit more. And at the same time, Louise, (laughs) I'm starting to get really irritated by her. She's always, she's trying to rationalize things that, and I mean, obviously I've never been in this type of situation. After a certain point, you kind of have to realize like, okay, something weird is happening here. And there's no rational explanation. That's that's her way of coping with it, I guess, which, you know, is fine. So is this book scary? I think that depends. It is extremely unsettling, especially if you were the kid that grew up with a bunch of stuffed animals and personify those stuffed animals. Like if you talk to them and you like pretended that they that they had feelings and opinions and, you know, you'd you'd tuck them in at night, make sure they're warm enough. If that was you as a kid, then yes, I think that you would be very freaked out by this book. I'm still enjoying this. I would still say that this is so far my favorite Grady Hendrix book. Right now, it's probably sitting at a strong four. I do see potential for four and a half, which would place it just above my best friend's exorcism. We will see how it goes. Hi, friends. It has been a few days since I've updated. Sunday, I think, was the last day. It's now Wednesday on my steering wheel, so you're gonna turn as I turn. I have about 150 pages left in How to Sell a Haunted House, and I think that's like, I don't know, 60%, something like that. I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I, I was liking it in the beginning. It was strange, but I was liking it. And then around the halfway point, it started to get super strange. This one's definitely bizarre. And unfortunately, it's not what I was expecting at all. I'm pushing through. I'm going to finish the book. In the beginning, I was thinking it could be a four or five. And now I'm thinking three or four, honestly. Januarys are usually not super great for me. That was just a sheet of ice that just flew off the top of my car. Should I be cleaning off the top of my car? Yeah. Can I reach it? Nope. So today I'm taking the afternoon off of work as like a mental health day because your girl's struggling a little bit. I worked this morning for a few hours and now I'm heading into town. I'm going to get some coffee at Starbucks. Then I have to stop at Target and I want to look at the book section and I might decide to buy a book because shopping is a form of self-care. I'll probably grab lunch. Qdoba sounds amazing. I just want to finish this dang book so I can be done with it. I got Starbucks. I tried a new one today. Um, Usually I get like the brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso. My old go-to used to be just a plain soy latte, but uh, today I tried a soy pistachio latte and it's pretty good. A little sweeter than I like. And then the other thing that I got is something that I've been getting entirely way too often, but birthday cake pop. You're so good. I'm at Target now. Just gonna sit here and enjoy my cake pop and my latte. Another thing about me, I have um, pretty bad social anxiety. I'm not on medication for it. I mean, I have something that's like as needed for when I sense like a an attack coming, like a panic attack or an anxiety attack. So I have something for that. But other than that, I don't take anything. Um, I just deal with it, overcome it as best I can. Usually when I'm in a public setting by myself, I'll have my headphones in so that I can just, you know, zone out, listen to a book or something. But I don't currently have one going and I don't want to start one when I'm like in public. I like to be kind of well established into the audiobook before I go out in public because I feel like I I get distracted more easily obviously because you're like shopping back on the book though something that kind of happened a little after halfway is that turned me off a little bit the point of view shifted from being in Louise's point of view to her brother Mark's point of view it's gone back to Louise's point of view since then but like there were a few chapters that were from his point of view I don't mind dual POV or multiple POV but 
I need consistency though. So like if you're gonna have multiple POV, I can do that and I can follow along, but only if it's done from the beginning. Addie LaRue did that too, where it switched to Henry's POV and I hated that. Plus the things going on in the book now are just like a little over the top. I thought I liked weird. I really did. I thought I liked bizarre, but turns out I have limits. bad as I expected but as usual I spent entirely way too much money most of it was on things that I needed I did end up getting a couple books I told myself only one but then I saw two I will show you those when I get back home maybe this is normal maybe it's just a social anxiety thing I was doing okay in there for a while and then it's like all of a sudden my body tells me like okay we need to go we need to go right now like I will get like a hot flash and I'll just I'll be in a panic like I'll feel like I need to leave this building right now so it got to that point and I don't like staying like that's why I hate shopping I'm not gonna go to Qdoba because I want to go home but also I saw a can of tomato soup and I'm like you know what sounds amazing tomato soup and grilled cheese that is what I'm gonna make for lunch when I get home hopefully I'll just sit and read for a couple hours but I'm really hungry so I need to go home now anybody else sit in their car and scroll on TikTok for like the first 15 minutes after they get home? Because I do. And I love TikTok because one second I'm bawling over a dedication video to someone's pet who passed away. And then the next I'm cackling because someone outed their husband for sleeping with his eyes open. And it was really creepy, <laughs> but it was funny. so hungry. I just scarfed down nearly all of my sandwich. Everything else that I got from Target was pretty boring, but there's a few things that I do want to share. The first is, this is Mona. Mona is a money tree. She lives off of two ice cubes a week. I don't have, aside from the succulent that I have upstairs, and that it's a tiny succulent, I don't have any other plants in the house, so I figured this would be a good one to get. And I did look it up, and according to Chinese legend, the money tree is a type of tree that can bring money and fortune to the people. It is a highly sought after symbol of prosperity and good fortune. And then the two books that I got, the first is The World We Make by N.K. Jemisin, and this is the sequel to 
something about a city. The great city. So the city we became is the first one. And then the other one is The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. This one, oh, I don't really know what this one's about. I think, I think they're sci-fi-ish. I don't really know what the first one is about either. Oh yeah, the most celebrated science fiction and fantasy writer of her generation. So I know she writes science fiction, um, like the fifth season trilogy. Oh, I'm sorry, it's called the Broken Earth trilogy, but it starts with the fifth season. That's the first one. And then the Inheritance trilogy, which I also have. So I have the Broken Earth trilogy, the Inheritance trilogy, and now these two. Um, the Measure, this is the one where people are presented with a string, I think, and like the longer the string, the longer they live. Like the length of the string is in correlation with how much time they have left in life. Today when you open your front door, waiting for you is a small wooden box. This box holds your fate, the exact number of years you will live. Ooh, so it's precise, okay enchanting and deeply uplifting. I've heard amazing things about this. Shannon, who is Books by the Glass over on Instagram, she suggested this for me for my 12 books, 12 friends challenge. Anyways, I'm going to finish eating my lunch. When I was um, making my lunch, I was watching Lauren's new video. She has a new reading vlog up. Um, and in that one, she did actually read How to Sell a Haunted House. I'm on page 276 out of 314, I think. No, 414, 413, there we go, 413. I kind of left off at a point where things were gearing up. I don't think I like it. It keeps declining. <laughs> I got to a part where it kind of seemed like that should be it, but there was still more than 100 pages left. And then the story keeps going. I just, I don't buy it. I'm not saying that that books need to always make sense or be logical because that's kind of the fun of a fiction is, you know, things are, are made up, but at the same time, it does need to make sense in the world of the story. It took a turn that doesn't make sense. There's zero logic here, like goose egg. And to support the fact that I wholeheartedly believe that books do not need to make sense, The House Across the Lake by Rayleigh Sager. If you've read that, you know what I'm talking about. In the real world, there's no logical sense there. But for me anyways, I feel like the story was built up enough and supported enough with its own logic that for that story, it did make sense. Does that make sense? But here, I am not buying it at all. I have about 85 pages left. Oh, I am struggling to get through it. Struggle bus. And I would DNF, but there is a part of me that I, you know, I do really want to know what happens. I do still want to read the book. I do still want to finish it. So I think that is saying something. For right now, my enjoyment level is pretty low. I know tons of people love Grady Hendrix, and that's great. So I don't think he's for me, so I should probably stop reading his books after I read Final Girl Support Group. It is almost 8 o'clock. I might pick it back up. I'm not really sure. I'm honestly really tired, um, so I don't think I'd be able to focus very well, especially because I am struggling so much reading this. But I don't have the kids tomorrow. They do go to their dad's tomorrow after school, and I'm pretty sure Nick has plans. So I should be able to finish this tomorrow. And honestly, I cannot wait to be done with this. I finished it. I had to sit with it for, for a little bit, just like a couple hours, because I had to really try to figure out what my rating was going to be. And so this was, this was kind of really tough because the beginning of this book was super intriguing. While I feel like I don't mesh well with Grady Hendrick's writing style, I do think it's good writing. There were characters that I liked, but I don't think that they were anything super unique or anything that, that really wowed me. Atmosphere though, atmosphere was really good. I think Grady Hendrix is really good at that, specifically the horror intrigue I did rate highly because even though I was not really enjoying my reading, I still wanted to know what happened. I said earlier that for me to really be able to like a book, it has to make sense for the world in the book. And I just don't think this one made sense. I don't think that there was much logic. There were definitely things that just logic was out, out the window completely. And overall, my experience, I gave a pretty low score for that because pretty much from like the halfway point to the end, 
was kind of where I the book lost me. Overall, I just, I feel like the book was really unrealistic. Without going into spoilers, I feel like there's not really much more that I can say. At this point, I will go into some spoilers, so this is your warning. If you have not read this book yet, and you plan to, you don't want to be spoiled, please skip ahead. I will put a little spoiler section down in the bottom, so when that goes away, it will be safe for you to start listening again. Okay, so... For those of you that want spoilers or have already read the book, when I hear, I don't even have the book with me, it's downstairs, I'm done with it. When I hear the term haunted house, okay, I think ghost, maybe demon, but definitely ghost. And I feel like that's a pretty general interpretation. So for majority of the book, you know, we're led to believe that there's not a ghost, but like a possessed puppet or puppets dolls. And I think between Pupkin and Spider, the impression that I got was that there was an element of like extreme child imagination, maybe brought on by trauma. That's kind of how I took it, was that Pupkin being what he was, Spider being what he was, I thought that was just kind of, you know, like a manifestation of childhood trauma mixed with imagination and just a little bit of magic, I guess. And as the book is going on, while I didn't really like that idea, it was, for what it was, kind of making sense. I think, though, if Mark and Louise hadn't been the only ones dealing with this, like if they had sooner pulled in, you know, Aunt Gail, Aunt Honey, Mercy, Constance, if they had pulled their other family members into this sooner, I feel like it would have been more rooted in the realism of their world. But because they didn't, and it was just the two of them secluded in this house, I think that's why I, I kind of felt like it didn't, it just, it didn't seem realistic because it just, it seemed so over the top. And the decisions that they made and the things they ended up doing, it was just too over the top for me. I, I wasn't buying it. But then at the end, when we end up finding out that it is actually a ghost, and it's the ghost of Nancy's little brother who died when he was five years old, then I'm like, okay, this really doesn't make sense because then how does that explain Spider? Is it a ghost and magic? Like, is it both of those things? That part just didn't, really didn't make sense to me at all. And then also too, like, how if Freddy was attached to this pupkin doll that Nancy had as a child and then he was burned, how did that attachment then reappear across the country in Poppy's mind to be able to create a new pupkin doll and like, for lack of a better term, download pupkin and Freddy's ghost like into this new doll? What? What? After the whole thing happened with Mark and Louise at the house, the arm gets cut off, whatever, they go to the hospital. There's still like, what, 100 pages left? I think a little more than 100 pages left. So at that point of the book, I'm like, okay, this feels like the end. This feels like this should be the end. What more could happen? And then Louise goes home back to San Francisco. And when she walks into her daughter's room and Pupkin is there, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, mm -mm. it makes no sense. I wasn't buying it. I think that's all I wanted to say, spoilery wise. The book started out super promising. I honestly, for the first at least quarter of the book, I would have said that this would be my favorite Grady Hendrix, but alas, it is not. My best friend's exorcism still remains my favorite, even though I still didn't really care for that one that much. But overall, How to Sell a Haunted House, I did end up rating three stars, which I think considering the issues that I had with the book, I think a three is still pretty good rating. It's honestly a lot higher than I was expecting once I did my calculations for Copile. Still really thinking that Grady Hendrix just might not be for me. However, I've heard a lot of people say that Final Girls, Final Girl, why can't I talk? The Final Girl support group is one that they don't like. So I'm wondering if because I'm not a huge Grady Hendrix fan, maybe I might actually really like that one. Most likely from here on out, any new releases from Grady Hendrix, I'm probably going to pass on. If you've made it this far, thank you for sticking with me through all of my opinions. If you have read this book, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts were. Do we have similar thoughts or do you completely disagree with me? 
Either way, let me know. And if you haven't read the book and you're thinking about reading it, please do not let my opinions deter you. If anything, I want to make you more curious so that you will pick it up and read it and find out for yourself. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Until next time.